Hello, I'm Raymond. Today, I'll be showing you how to use the OS reporting wizard in Mongoose and exploring its functionalities. Before we dive into the tutorial, there's just a couple of prerequisites. Make sure you've already set up Mongoose and the Ion API connection on your tenant or local environment. All set? Great. All right, let's kick things off by accessing the OS reporting wizard selector. Let's navigate to form and click open. Now you'll see a filter edit box, type in OSR. From the list that appears, select OS reporting wizard selector. Now that we're in the OS reporting wizard selector, let me give you a quick overview of what you can do here. You can see four tabs at the top, data view, report, strongly typed API, and data lake to IDO. These are different ways to create and customize reports based on your data. For this tutorial, we'll focus on data view, report, and data lake to IDO. An IDO, or intelligent data object, allows you to transform and enrich your data with business logic and metadata. You can create an IDO from any object in the data lake to create an IDO from a data lake object, follow these steps. First, click on the data lake to IDO tab. This opens the data lake to IDO wizard, where you can select the source object and configure the IDO properties. In the wizard, click the drop down arrow. These objects have been loaded into the data lake from various sources, such as files, databases, or APIs. By default, the wizard pulls data from the data lake. For this demo, I'll pull data from the data lake and select OO line as the object. This object contains order line items from an online store. Next, click Get Schema to retrieve the schema of the selected object. Once that's completed, let's display it in a table by going to Object Properties. By default, all properties of the data lake object will be included in the IDO. For this demo, I'll be selecting five properties to use, which will make the generation of the report data much faster. The Data Lake Options section offers six variations of data to choose from. If you're unsure which option to select, hover over each one to see a tooltip. For example, if you want to include deleted and archived properties of the Data Lake object in the IDO, just select the appropriate option. However, for this demo, I will leave it as is. Then, click Next. To make it easier for you and your team to remember IDOs created from the same object, change the IDO name to something more specific. For this demo, I'll name it OO Line Video Demo. Now choose a previously created project name, then click Finish, and we're done. We've successfully created an IDO. To create a report for the IDO we just made, let's head over to the Report Builder by clicking on that tab. First, let's name the criteria form we'll use later. I'll call it OO Line Video Demo Report. Press Tab, and the other boxes will auto-populate. From the drop-down, select the IDO we just created. You'll see various layout and region options. Once you're done, just click Next. To select properties, simply choose the ones you want to include in your report from the available list and move them over to the right column. If you find it difficult to understand these acronyms, you can click the Show Description button for more information. I'll select the five properties I need by highlighting them and moving them over. Once you're done, just click Next. In the Criteria and Summary Type section, you can sort the properties and add attributes to them. I'll start by sorting the properties into a more report-friendly order. Next, let's discuss the criteria type and summary type columns. For criteria type, you can choose between a range or a single value, which helps filter specific data ranges. For example, you might want to see order numbers 1 to 50 in your report. For summary type, you can perform functions like summation, average, and count. For the attribute SAPR, which is the sale price, I'll choose Summation. 
and then do the same for NAPR, which is the net price. Once you're done, just click Next. On the final page, if you want the report grouped by order number, select Customer Order Number and move it to the right-hand column. Once done, click Finish, and you'll soon see a message confirming that the process is complete. I recommend copying the report name for quicker access when we run the report. To run the report, go to Form and click Open. Since we've copied the criteria form name, just paste it in, select it, and click OK. Next, click Preview to start the process. You can also click here to print or download the report. But I prefer to preview it first, as we will get that option again. The time it takes to generate the report depends on factors like data volume, internet connection, and whether it's the first time generating the report. Here's what the report output looks like. As you can see, the data is ordered by order number, and both the sales price and net price have summation totals. As previously mentioned, you can download the report using the download button here. Another type of report we can use is called data view. Data views are advanced data grids that let you query a custom set of data, similar to how an Excel spreadsheet displays data in columns. The process of creating a data view is very similar to creating a report in the Report Builder. First, create a criteria form name. Then, select the previously created IDO. After click Next, then we'll select and sort the criteria we want. I'll fill these in quickly, since we've covered them before. Finally, run the report by opening it in Forms. Now let me explain each of the functions you can use. First, click the gear icon. You'll see a lot of options available. The first one is Hide Summaries. This lets you hide the summary row at the bottom of the form. Next is Hide. This lets you hide a column where you have clicked the gear icon. Then there's Column Chooser. This allows you to select which columns you want visible in the data view. Advanced Filter lets you set how much data you want to see and use logical statements for more specific filtering. Move to lets you sort or move columns to your liking. Manage layout allows you to save the layout you've created so you can call upon it when you run this report again as it will reset to the default. Select layout lets you choose a layout you've saved. Data refreshes the data. Send to lets you create a PDF or Excel file with the data. And finally display. This controls how the data is presented. Now let's look at expression columns. This allow you to create a custom additional column that displays data based on expressions you can define. Let's go ahead and add an expression column. I'll name it add and the output will be an integer. then click Edit. On this screen, you have many functions available. For example, you can add the values of two columns, get the average, or concatenate the values. Let's say I want to add both net price and sales price. First, I'll find Add, and then click Edit for value 1. Choose Data View Property, and then select Sales Price. Next, I'll do the same for net price by clicking Edit for value 2. Once that's done, we can click OK, then OK again, and finally OK one more time. 
you'll now see a new column on the far right of the data view. The values in this column are the sum of both net price and sales price. Let's move on to the next function, expression summaries. This allows you to create a summary at the bottom of a designated column based on expressions you create. However, commonly used expressions are pre-made and can be found by clicking the sum icon at the bottom of each column. Lastly, you can select a property to group by clicking here. For example, if you want to group the table by order number, you can do that here. Finally, let's finish this video by adding summations for sales price and net price. That wraps up our demonstration. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more valuable insights like this. Dive deeper, build greater, and accomplish more. Developer.info.com, the place where your concepts become reality. Explore with us today.